Now on Zero Block 30, we are privileged to have WWE superstar, but that's not the reason why she's on the show. She's on the show because she's a United States Marine. We have Lacey Evans, who you've seen her all over WWE Raw and all over the place. She's been touring with Jay Glazer, going to Miramar. Lacey, thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you for having me, you nasty. <laughs> yeah, I am nasty. We always call uh, our other co-host, Kate, we call her Katie Stolen Balor. But you just proved to me you already knew because we were talking before we started recording if we knew any of the same people when Lacey went to boot camp in 2010. So going through, you've you've done a lot of things all over the globe now. I want to, you don't talk much about your boot camp experience. So when you showed up at boot camp, what were your initial thoughts? Did you think, what the hell have I gotten myself into? When you got to recruit training, what went through your brain? Uh, I mean, I was probably one of the weird ones. I was um, just excited uh, to go through another challenge in my life. Um, I didn't have the easiest upbringing. So, um, you know, the fight or flight, the that feeling in your gut that just makes you sick and just like on edge all the time I've had since I was little. So I was, um, honestly, I had a taste for a challenge. I had a taste for being uncomfortable. And I just remember honestly going through the bus. Cause you know, they, they, they ship us in, you know, at night it's I was tired. You know, I remember it being cold, mm -hmm. uh, cause I'm from, you know, I, I shipped out from Louisiana um, and I came into obviously South Carolina, Paris Island, and I'm just riding through the bus at night. And this, this asshole comes on, excuse my French. It, <laughs> no, you're good. Am I good? Um, and he comes on and he's like, you know, sit up straight, show me your IDs, put your heads in your laps. Now, mind you, we had to ride around with our heads between our legs mm -hmm. for a while. And I obviously for FF games, you know what I mean? Mess with your head a little bit more before you put your foot on the yellow footprints. But I mean, as you know, once you get off that bus and they start, I mean, spitting on you, mm -hmm. yelling in your face, get on the yellow foot. I mean, it's like a ball. It's like a ball that just rolls downhill and you don't honestly have much time to think, um, you know, what the hell did I get myself into until you're in your rack let hours and hours later asleep mm -hmm. or trying to fall asleep. And I think that that was the first moment that I was like, ah, oh, shit, what did I do? Um, and what's next? Not really. What did I do? Cause obviously I, you know, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. Um, but at the same time, you really don't. Like, if you were like me when I was there, like, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but when you're at boot camp, it's almost like once the 13 weeks is over, in your brain a little bit, you think, that's it. Like, I'm done. And then you have five-year contract after. Did you feel that same way? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I but I guess I didn't think that far out. You know, I mean, <laughs> when I'm laying in my rack, all I'm worried about is how many hours are they going to give me to sleep? Hell, I don't know. You know, they didn't mention that when they were yelling at me for freaking hours um, and it just being cold, you know. And so that was like I said, it was just a whirlwind. And I was more, I was more excited than anything, uh, because like I said, I mean, I was I, I honestly feel like I was made to be uncomfortable. I was made to really put myself out there and uh, and and take it, take it one hit at a time. Yeah. And when I, I was when I was in, I stayed in for a little while and I became an instructor at my MOS schoolhouse. And when I was there, I always think back, like, was there standout students who, if they go on to do amazing things outside of the military, would I recognize that? Do you think any of your drill instructors looking back were like, her? She's a WWE superstar now? I don't think so. I think, uh, I mean, I, I didn't graduate honor grad, but I graduated company's highest shooter. And my, I'm there telling you, you my, my kill hat hated me. Uh, Sergeant Lily, if you're out there, I would love to square up with your ass right now. Um, <laughs> love it. You should find Rough and Rowdy, Lacey. Bring it to Rough and Rowdy. Everybody tag her, find her, because I promise you, now I have respect, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I do what I'm told. I have a lot of discipline. I will take direction. And, um, but you know, it, it takes a good follower to be a good leader. But she had like this personal in, in you know, something against, she hated me. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, like, this nasty that's probably because you show potential yeah no i'm pretty <laughs> sure it was and i had grit so like you're not supposed to and, i mean god bless my heart i was like you know i had okay 
I come from a mean dad. Like this, this dude was massive and mm -hmm. he was the meanest man I've ever met in my life. Now I go from having this physically, mentally, and emotionally mean ass father doing gut into, you know, having this Sergeant Lily in my face yelling at me. And I, and so I'm like, all right, you know, I can take it. I'll take your 145 <laughs> pounds soaking wet per human being yelling at me. I'll do what I'm told because I got three months. I'm going to graduate from here and I'm going to go off to do some badass things, but I can't put my hands on you. I'm not going to yell back because it's part of the game and mm -hmm. I got to learn discipline. I get that. But this woman, like I tell you what, I'm probably, I'm probably the only recruit, the only prior military, the only veteran to ever call out my drill instructors. But let me tell you something right now that she hated me. She would literally make me it. Mind you, it was October november december and then into january so the end of all it was cold it was cold as hell in south carolina frost on the ground and we would line up to go learn some knowledge out of our green monsters if mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying there are these oh yeah books. and this woman would make me go and put my hands on the the uh, ac units outside they're all metal so by this point they're frozen as hell mm -hmm. freezing Hold, a layer of ice she would make me take my gloves off and hold put my hands on these uh this damn ac unit while the every class november company they would all line up and slowly uh sh shuffle their way in this warm building not 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 evans i was uh you know i recruit evans at that time and i had to stand out there and hold this damn she hated me so just uh this you know, story is making me, this st my staff and co heart just like so happy I know, <laughs> that I know. you were put anytime junior troops or recruits are in pain it just makes my heart Ooh. smile so much and you you went on from graduating there top shooter which is awesome and then you went to MP school. And right. I like at that time, 2010, before a lot of the restrictions on women were removed, being an MP was the closest you were going to get really to combat arms, like there and combat engineers. So doing a little bit of combat arms and you didn't stop there because you did graduate at top of your school at MP school, yes. right? I did out of uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. I was uh, honor grad, uh, top of my class. And uh, which funny, real quick, funny little story. My husband, so I've been married to him since I was 19. I've been with him since I was 15. Um, they, Whoa, they, you got through your entire enlistment, didn't get a divorce? Yeah, yeah believe That's it or not. That's incredible. <laughs> but I will say it was very difficult and I did take advantage of the free marriage counseling. Mm. I did take advantage of the free marriage retreats on the weekends. You can go like the Marine Corps offered that stuff. So I didn't sit on my ass and just fight with my husband. When we started to butt heads and when life got hard, we would, you know, we would figure it out. We didn't just take those hits. We went to the counseling. We went to the sessions when we could with our, with my schedule and uh, we made it work by the grace of God. So but um, yeah, he actually moved to Missouri, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. My instructors were pissed, which as you know, you know, it's, it's, um, this is your MOS. This is where you're supposed to learn your career. You don't need a distractions. You don't mm -hmm. need, but my husband. And this was, is like right at the beginning of training. Cause we have a lot of civilian yeah. listeners. So you go from boot camp, and then you go on to MCT Marine combat training. And then after that, you go to your MOS school, which Lacey is a military policeman. So whenever you're there, you are in the very initial stages of training. You're still not like capable of really doing any jobs. This is where you learn how to do your job. So your instructors there want your undivided attention, no family members, no spouses around, and you broke that rule. <laughs> I did, and you know what's funny is, so you'll know, you'll understand this. I don't know how many like uh, military listeners, but they pay for base uh, housing allowance for your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I got to stay in the barracks, you know, for military police, for school, for MOS school. And he stayed in a tent. He lived in a zip tent off base. Right. So imagine this. You've I love this dude. I love that move. Saving yeah. money. <laughs> He's a mean son of a gun. He's going to do anything he can to be with his wife. If there is a gray area anywhere without, without being disrespectful or making me lose opportunities, you know, he's going to figure it out. And, and sure enough, he did. And the gunny brought in like four of us that had our spouses there. All the rest had, had a house. They had, they were renting a house, but not my husband. He was in a tent in a zip tent right off base. And he stayed there for almost a year because we had a holding platoon that didn't pick up. So, and it was snowing in Missouri, but when the gunny came and said, where does your spouse live? Because the BAH, the separations pay, they were charging these Marine, these Marines 
the the difference so we, they had to pay back but because this is just a side story but because my husband didn't have a home he didn't have a physical address we were the only ones and i'll never forget that gunny's face what the hell do you mean your your husband is living in a tent and i was like yes sir i don't you don't have an address but you know you can go to his tent you know i'm telling him and he's <laughs> like well we can't charge him like whatever so it was the weirdest thing but uh and then when i graduated honor grad top of my class flying colors they actually asked uh my husband to turn in his linen at the you know what i mean because they were making a joke about yeah, it yeah but I will say he helped me, you know, every day when we got out of training, uh, I don't know if Fort Leonard would, uh, civilians are allowed on base. Mm -hmm. He would run with me. He would study with me. He would train with me. He would, that was at the time when females were now going to start to be expected to do pull-ups. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, we were doing pull-ups together and it, I, I got to give him most of the credit um, because I don't know if I would have been autograd had I not had that badass man waiting saying, what did you learn today? Let's work on it. And and then I ended up being top of my class. So that's awesome. And then you went from there to SRT. So SRT, for those that are listening, you're probably more familiar with the term SWAT. That's kind of what SRT is, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's special reactions team. And I always say the word SWAT because like, you know, civilians don't, you know, what is SRT? And I was the only female ever to be on the SWAT team here in Beaufort, South Carolina, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and we did have a K-9 unit attached. Um, so, I mean, it was, it was a little harder than your regular MP job. You, it was more, um, you know, special forces type. You had a different mindset, different ability. You know, we were the ones that came in for different types of threats. So you got your everyday domestic, you know, uh, 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 regular speeding traffic ticket would be the MPs. But if there was a barricaded suspect, a hostage situation, a suspicious package, that's where the, the SRT, the SWAT, would come and there was seven of us on that and uh so that when things really kind of changed you can't leave the area you have to be 24 7 seven days a week on call have your pack with you in your car at a lot all of times time. no drinking is allowed if you're on the well, srt no, team not a lot of times it's all the time you i mean you can't and if you wanted to you had to actually request from our staff sergeant you know this is what i wanted to do so he's aware so he knows the head count for any potential threat to see who could actually respond um, you couldn't go to the mall because it was outside of 45 minutes. So, you know, without requesting. Um, so it was pretty crazy, but uh, I loved every bit of it. And now, like I'm doing the research for this, I saw some of the old pictures of you in uniform and things like that. Now that you're this WWE superstar, you're always done up like makeup and hair to the nines. Do you ever look back and be like, huh, I wish I would have done some of these pictures a little bit different. Cause like looking back, Lacey now compared to Lacey then is drastically different. Oh, dude. I mean, I didn't even know how to put on makeup. I mean, you know me. And I was a hard target. Yeah, I didn't see any makeup pictures unless it was like camouflage makeup, like yeah, camouflage no. paint. <laughs> I did. I don't. I didn't even have eyebrows back then. I don't know what was going on, but you know what? I knew I was badass at my job. I knew I could perform, um, and I knew I was a. I was a freaking marine, man. Like if you weren't in regs, and nobody would have respected you if you walked in with the red lipstick and like the eyebrows that you have now. Like if you're in uniform and you show up like that, you automatically lose respect. Don't look at Lacey, don't, excuse me, don't look at Sergeant Estrella if you walk in with that shit on your face, okay? Right. Because one job and looking like that does not help our job, right? right. So like plus regulation, I upheld the, the standards of being a United States Marine. We were the finest fighting force. If you were BCP, if you were out of regs weight-wise, uniform-wise, hair-wise, makeup-wise, bearing-wise, do not. They knew not to pass me because I love the Marine Corps. I love what we stand for. We are the, we are badass son of a guns. And I held myself to that standard. And that meant not having eyebrows, I guess, honey. And I probably I would imagine higher standard to a higher standard because being like kind of a trailblazer in the SRT community, because I only knew in my decade in, I only knew maybe two or three women who were SRT and it was very, very rare. So when you're in one of those positions, everybody's already looking at you. Did you, did you always feel that way? Like when you checked into a unit, your SRT female, which was rare, like that you had to live up to the standard even more so than you normally would. Absolutely. Um, but I kind of had that mindset even going into boot camp, right? Because you got 
company's highest shooter and then you go into your MOS and you're the honor graduate and then you go to corporal's course and I was honor graduate out of corporal's course so like I'm very these may you're seem fucking like motivator I love it because, and they make <laughs> little things to like you know fellow marines who have have combat ribbon and like combat tours I don't have any of that I didn't you know but I am proud of what I represented as a marine as a female marine and those little things those circoms meritorious masses honor graduate it may have just been corporal's course but I fucking worked my ass off and I'm proud of that and uh, and then it then SRT came up and you know I was proud of that so I've always you know across the board held myself to as it just envisioning people looking at me like, man, I could potentially be that, that Marine, that standard, or even more. I wish that they would have, especially when the pushups came, you know, when it changed and females were expected to choose either, or I firmly believe they should choose the pushup side or the pull-ups, you know, mm -hmm. like we should be able to do them. If that's within regs and that's like the, the top, either the flex arm hang, or you've got a little, we should push, we should go a little hard further and beyond, you know, right. If that's harder, that's what you should be doing. Uh, or at least training to do so. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And it's inspiring to see somebody like go out and admit like I didn't do combat. And I think that that is something that's extremely important for people to see because there's this whole generation of people who joined after 9-11 who didn't get the opportunity. I'll say the opportunity. They didn't get their number called to go to Afghanistan or Iraq or Syria. But that's not your decision to make. And I think that people lose sight of that. Like, I'm sure if your number would have called and they say, go to Afghanistan, go to Iraq, go to Syria, you would have done it. But the Marine Corps didn't ask you to, but you did the exact thing that you were supposed to do. You trained heavily, trained hard, and were ready for anything that was going to come your way, correct? Right, absolutely. And it, it um, excuse my language for, for the future. Uh, I don't know exactly where we're broadcasted on. No, here, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> um, right. I mean, and it just, it just, just depends on your cards, you know, it depends on the way that your life works. You never know what's going to come. You never know, uh, what opportunities you're going to have you as just a human things change, you know, and it's up to you to just take what you have, whatever that may be, and just try to be a good representation, try to be a motivator, especially in the Marine Corps and go above and beyond no matter what, what you've got going. And a lot of people don't realize that they think of like combat tour, but you know, in order for those Marines or those military servicemen and women to go over and, and com compete and serve our country and like protect our country overseas in a combat environment, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of us that are boots on deck that need to protect the, uh, you know, the, the United States and, mm -hmm. and the military bases. And then you've got admin and supply. I just saw this funny tattoo today. Actually, it made me laugh. I don't, you've probably seen it. It's uh bullets can't fly without supply. I was, yeah. dying. <laughs> I was dying. He got this tattooed on his, um, on his bicep, but it was just funny, but I makes, love that when people are like administrative roles, then they're ate up about it. Like there's a dude that lives in my neighborhood that rot that drives this huge truck and his license plates, the Texas license plate. It's like S one chief. Like he's in charge of the fucking S one, which is the, the admin role, which I absolutely love watching your clips from doing wrestling. I have to imagine that being an NCO greatly helped you out when you're cutting a promo. Like if you know how to yell at people and yell at Marines, like being able to be in that moment and just go the hell off and just string together a couple insults, you probably learned that a little bit from the Marine Corps as well, right? Like I would think that's very helpful. A lot of it, uh, you know, and it's just that confidence, you know, it just going out there and knowing that whatever happens, you're gonna, it's adapt. You gotta adapt and overcome. You gotta adapt from the embarrassment and from the mess, you messing up and from the, thousands of people watching you and from forgetting your lines like as a maintaining Marine, bearing bearing that's a huge one and yes so yes i definitely credit the united states marine corps for my mouth my sharp tongue my quick uh comebacks and my ability on the mic because you know as you know leadership courses leadership was important and part of leadership within the marine corps part of me leadership was having that confidence to be able to verbally lead uh emotionally and mentally be able to lead a group of people no even no matter how small from one to two to over 50 to 60 to an entire platoon right so um it's pretty much the same thing you know you tell me what the topic is you tell me what needs to be taught or said or controlled or led and give me the mic and I'll do it because, you know, they taught me how.
<laughs> I think it's awesome. Like when there's certain aspects of when you're speaking, I hear like the Marine in you still like, and it's something that you cannot take away. Like there's recently a clip that came out with you and Jay Glazer being on Miramar. And I know from this job, it's not the same as being a WWE superstar, but when I go places like the Super Bowl and I meet with normal Barstool fans, it's one thing. When I'm back on a base and I meet with Barstool fans who are also Marines or sailors, soldiers, airmen, Coast Guard, whoever, it's something so different. Do you feel that when you go back on a Marine base where it's like a cool bath on a hot day where you're just like, these are my people? All the time. Again, you know, because you mentioned like the whole makeup thing. And this is a whole different world, man. And I literally went from no makeup, sweatpants, skivvy tops, boots and utes, um, muddy, smelling to, to, you know what I mean? To being able to be surrounded by people that are feeling the same, emotionally the same, same mission. Um, and, and to this makeup and hair and heels and you know, so yes, 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 yes. Being around my fellow military servicemen and women, veterans, active duty, it doesn't matter. It's a whole different lifestyle. It's a whole different uh, topic. It's a whole different conversation that you will never find in the civilian sector. And it is a breath of, breath of fresh air. And, and it just reminds me why I do put on all this makeup and I put on these heels and I continue to entertain because a lot of times it is for our military servicemen and women. You know, we just had tribute to the troops and it's just incredible the things that I get to do still as a veteran and as a WWE superstar across the board. But being around them, ugh, it's just like 10 pounds of weight just off my off my neck, honey, and I get to hang out and just reminisce a little bit. Now, do you feel when you're back on base and you see like a, a crusty first sergeant walking back, do you still get a little nervous? Or are you like, I know he's not coming for me this time? No, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I do. Like I still, I met, uh, I think it was a three-star. We were at Fort Hood and a three-star came up and I almost went to parade rest. And I was like, wait a minute, I've got a fucking beard. I don't need to go to parade rest for this dude. <laughs> like I don't need to do that anymore, but that's how I feel going in. Would you, if you had to give Vince McMahon a rank, what rank do you think he would be not officer? So obviously he's like the general, like the commandant of it. But if he was going to be a, like his personality, an enlisted rank, which one do you think he would excel at the most? Oof, that's hard. Um, Probably, probably a gunny. Like yeah. he's, I mean, he's got this grit about him, to be honest with you. Um, Now, obviously he's like professional, but like if he were to be military, like, you know, around that, he would be a gunny because don't mess. Like he may be kind of laid back, but do not mess with him because he is like one of the most motivated to this company that I've ever seen. You want to talk about a hardworking man. And I'm not just putting him over because he's my boss. Cause he'll probably never see this, but like that man is the first one there. He stays. I know joke till I've seen him there till 2 AM. Right. All of us are sleeping by 2 a.m. Right. And he's still there and uh, he's very laid back because he has to be professional and be able to talk to it. But do not. But he's very serious about what he does. And he's he's been doing this a long time. So I think maybe like a, a long term gunny. <laughs> I like it. A career retired gunny. I love it. 20 years in or something like that. Lacey, you are going to be in the WWE for a long time. We appreciate your time. Make sure that you check her out with military makeovers that she does with Montel Williams as well. I'm sure that's fantastic. Is that something that you really enjoyed too? Like making military folks look better? Making them look better. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I mean, and it's, it's about going into their homes and making it more, um, like we just had an amputee veteran uh, Marine Corps that we just worked with and we fixed his house up and, and his wife and his kids, it's just going in and making it a uh, easier life for them mentally, uh, definitely physically around their home. But yeah, because like you said, I get to be surrounded by it. I get to give back to not only the veterans because I know firsthand what they go through, but also the families. Cause a lot of times they forget about our families. Like we may be going through hell, but like, let's not forget about the kids and the moms that are being ripped around and having to deal with this 
you know, stressed out service member. And, and so we get to get our hands on and help all of them involved within these families. And it's incredible. So it's probably one of my favorite things to do as far as the people that WW partners with in order to give back to the uh, veteran community. Yeah, I say that make them look better as like a typical makeover joke, but definitely like we had somebody on just last week, lost both of his legs in war. And now like whenever he came back, he had the same opportunity to get a house that was made for him where it was easier for him to get around. And that really gives people their freedom back, like in a way, like if you can get around your, if you can't get around your house, that's just absolutely a miserable life to lead. So you guys do a fantastic job there. You're fantastic on the WWE and you did a fantastic interview. Lacey, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a good one.